Tonight, I'm knocking a quilt off my quilting bucket list, and let's just say I think I'm gonna snail it. It uses beautiful fabrics, and I'm gonna show you how fun it is to quilt it. So, let's get to it. So I designed this quilt pattern because I wanted to try making a snail's trail quilt. And so I pulled out some of this beautiful majestic flight fabric. So one of my guilty pleasures is that I kind of like shimmery sparkly fabric. I think you can get away with using fabrics that you wouldn't necessarily wear. And I'm loving the gold shininess to this. I think it's gonna look beautiful, especially in the snail's trail block. Oh, and I love how that looks like a mandala. This is the Majestic Flight Fabric by Boundless Fabrics, and this quilt pattern designed by yours truly is free, so you can check out the description box below for links to that. But I think this is gonna look really pretty. Between the blues and the teals and the hint of purple, yes, I think I'm fully on the purple bandwagon. All right, I've got a beautiful array of fabric, so I'm gonna start cutting it up. So half of the fat quarters are gonna be cut one way for the blocks, and the other half will be cut up for the pieced border. I'm basically cutting four sizes of squares and then chopping them in half to have a bunch of different sizes of triangles. So by now, I'm sure you know that Craftsy Unlimited is now Blueprint. I know that you've realized that because I've seen your questions and comments when I've been on Facebook and YouTube, and I just wanna reassure you that the Midnight Quilt Show is not going anywhere. I mean, as long as you subscribe and tell your friends and leave comments and all that kinds of stuff. Your classes aren't going anywhere. In fact, they're making more, including some new and fun series like True Up. It's what you're used to, but better. They're adding more lifestyle classes like yoga, nutrition, cooking, everything you need to have a blueprint for what you wanna do in your life. So I have a bunch of triangles, I have some squares, and it's time to turn all those beautiful colors into a snail's trail block. So each snail's trail block uses two different colors of the print and the background. And this background is perfect for those colors. With that little bit of silver, it's gonna be really, really pretty. So I'm gonna start with my squares, and it's gonna have a basic four patch in the center. It's this part of a snail's trail block that I think, oh, this is no big deal, I've got this. It's when we start adding the triangles that it gets a little trickier. All right, so just like that, I'll sew the blocks together in rows and then sew the rows together. So now I have my four patch, this is where the triangles start to come into play, and that's gonna be the background here. So I'll sew one right there and one to the bottom. Now, if it's overlapping here with the points, that's actually a good thing. We want it to be a little bit longer so that we can trim it down when we're all finished. So I'm gonna fold this in half real quick just to give me a roughly a middle point. I'm gonna line that up with the middle seam and then sew a quarter inch and then do the same on the other side. Now this is where your iron's gonna come in really handy because I'm gonna press these seams before I add the triangles on the next side. Okay, so now that I have the background triangles on the top and bottom, it's time to add the prints on the, each side. So using the same size triangle, I'm going to line them up and sew them like this. Here's the main thing. I want these colors to match on both sides because that's what's gonna give us our twirly illusion. I'm gonna do a little trimming, get rid of those dog ears before I add the next part. Now the Snail's Trails block is one that's kind of been on my quilting bucket list for a while. It's not really that difficult. So what do you have on your bucket list? I'm sure you've got something on yours, right? Like that one quilt you're thinking, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that, I'm gonna make it. I'd love to hear what it is. So leave a comment below telling me what's on your bucket list or a quilt that you've recently finished that was on your bucket list. I love hearing success stories as well. A quick press and then I'll repeat with the triangles of print fabric on the other side. That's looking so good, I only have one more round to go, but it's very, very important to trim it up in between each time, because if it's getting bigger, and then you'll end up with blocks that are not super flat. So your pattern will show you where to place your pieces, but a good rule of thumb or something to look for is these colors are gonna rotate. So I'm not gonna wanna put my background block here because it's not gonna help this color make that curve that we're seeing. So, you know, sometimes it's late at night, I've had a little too much popcorn. Using that reference will really help me stay on the right track. Okay, almost done with this block. So this beautiful quilt block is finished, and it's really neat is when you see them next to each other, the different design that comes out. So I'm gonna repeat, making the same block with two different colors of fabric, and it just so happens I've already got a couple of them made. I'm gonna lay them out so you can see that secondary effect come out because it's pretty cool. So I have all the blocks in my first row, and this is the most exciting part about this quilt pattern, when you get to see the secondary designs come out. When I'm placing them, I'm not trying to make it match fabrics. I want it to be nice and scrappy, but I do want the colors to come together like this. So 
so where the two background triangles come together in the two triangles of a print. So as you can tell, I've got half of a block right here. When I add the second row, it's gonna look even better. But I'm gonna get this first one sewn together and we'll see what it looks like. All right, first row is done and snail. Yeah, that looks really good. I've got the second row finished and that's where we get to see where it all comes together. Just like that. How fun is that? So it's like the background, it makes the same block as the print. And I'm loving how that's looking, the beautiful colors. So I'm gonna sew this together, sew the rest of the rows together and we'll see what the center of the quilt looks like. So I have the center of my quilt. The problem is it's a little too small. So first I'm gonna add a thinner border of the background fabric, which is really gonna help these little snail blocks float on the background, and then a piece border, which is a great way to use up fabric scraps that you have or to show off beautiful fabrics, and then finishing it off with a light purple border, just because why the snail not? So I have my quilt sandwich basted and ready to go, and it feels so good to be so close to marking a quilt off my bucket list. And I've got quite the list of things that I wanna do. I've got a whole playlist on Blueprint of videos and shows that I wanna watch, but I gotta get this quilt done first. If you wanna see what's on my playlist, you can check out the description box below for a link to it. Since this block is such an irregularly shaped area, there's a couple different ways I can go about quilting it. So I'm gonna start in the center of an area by quilting a swirl. And then that's gonna be the center of a flower. And then I think I'm gonna start quilting arcs around that circle. I'm trying to keep the petals all the same size and I'm not worrying about whether it touches the line before it or not. I'm just continuing to work around the swirl, adding those petals. As soon as the flower is big enough, I'm gonna start quilting leaves to fill in these little kind of areas of background space in between the blocks. Leaves are easy to quilt. I'm just gonna quilt a line that arcs out to a point and back, then echo that shape. And I'm trying to quilt the leaves so they go in all different directions and really fill in the area as nice as possible. But within the blocks, I'm gonna switch it up with a dot-to-dot -dot design that uses straight lines and breaks up that block into the individual triangles that I pieced it with. I'm gonna get this quilted and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm finished. Have you ever worked on a quilt that seemed intimidating but once you got into it, it wasn't that bad? I think that pretty much sums up the Snail's Trail quilt. I'm pretty excited how it turns out and I'm excited to knock it off my bucket list. And I'm not sure which I loved more, the fact that I can get a curved illusion just using triangles or quilting all the different textures and designs in the background and blocks of the quilt. Well, if I'm being honest, it's probably the fabric that I love the most. That little bit of sparkle, yeah, that's one of my guilty pleasures. Well, thank you so much for watching this episode of The Midnight Quilt Show. I just want to tell you, I've already started designing quilts for the next season, and we've got some fun stuff in store for you. And be sure to check out my playlist on Blueprint, which you can find in the description box below. So here's to another night of great quilting. Cheers to knocking one off the bucket list.